Welcome to the station where big stories leave. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And we see or spill tea on the show while analyzing the biggest entertainment stories. I am Ifeo Lua Oshinke, and I'm here with Elwari 2 and Nimi De Kombi. What's good, guys? Uh, yeah. We're good. How yeah. Are you? Uh, two ladies to yourself this evening. You know, <laughs> you know, I wish you could have party after party. On the set? No, no. <laughs> Come That's on. why it's after party. After this party. is the first party. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah, but this, sadly, there won't be any after party. Why now? It can be on you. What's there? Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Mm. It can be on me. <laughs> I like the sound of that. This face. <laughs> hey, Nimi doesn't seem so impressed. Huh? Huh? No, because I know you now, so don't let, don't let me spill your secrets on air. Ooh. Oh, you know about my prowess. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's move on to the first story of, the, of this day. Okay, the ex fiancee of the late Bobby Christina Brown has died of a suspected drug overdose on New Year's Day in Florida. Nick Gordon, who, is 30, who was 30, suffered a series of heart attacks after the alleged drug overdose and later died at Altamont Springs Hospital. Mm -hmm. I think this is just a drug fueled yeah. family because it's just crazy. The mom died, the daughter died, the fiance died, drugs, Adila you, right? died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't even want to put it like that because I think we have a lot of active drug users that are still very good parents mm -hmm. and are still doing, but. In their case, I mean, I mean I to be honest, I, I don't think you can be into drugs and raise your children well because children tend to, it's what they see, see around yeah. them, you know. They Which feel was like, the case with Bobby Christina. Exactly. Actually. They yeah. feel like, okay, if this is mom's way of escaping from some things, it could work for me too and mm -hmm. all of that. This For this guy, I mean, it, it does not, maybe this guy does not come, come off as the best guy because, you know, is um, It was um, suspected, suspected to be the And even according to the law, as they said that Yazan Anden is dead yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dead, sorry, case, yeah. but it's not yet yeah, directly. And he was supposed to pay $30 million. $36 million. $36 million. So I don't know if he actually yeah. paid that fee. I'm, I'm not I sure think if he those, did that. <coughs> those, could have been, those could have been the issues that also surrounded this drug overdose. Probably those were the issues that he was thinking about. Yes, always no, because I don't drugs. think we should make excuses for drug users. Like I'm not the, making excuses I, I No, no, no. If, I, if no, I get users. you. We, I feel like... Um, yeah, you're right. Maybe not make excuses for them, mm -hmm. but you know, it's not everybody that really gets their life together. See, nobody really wants to grow up and say, okay, I want to be a drug addict, I want to be a drunkard and embarrass me and my family, but you know, because we have it together, does not mean it's everybody that can have it together. Mm -hmm. But the point is, we need to create more awareness. And in music, people should stop glorifying drugs. In movies, people should stop glorifying drugs. Because this old drug thing is already eating so well into our community, as society. Of the young, we keep using and young people lost a lot of every day. Yeah, That's why I think about, artists yeah. now should take this upon themselves, to be honest, and stop glorifying drugs or whatever in their song. Mo uh, movie makers, they need to take this upon themselves too. Start acting movies that when people watch, they will know that drug has nothing to offer, not even the highness, to yeah. be honest. Mm. Okay, because so what drug would, I've always said it, what drug would do to you is ruin you, kill you, and leave everybody around you devastated, <laughs> terrible, and frustrated. At the end of the day, Sometimes somebody else won't even cure you. You just find out that you're alone and you've All lost right. everyone around you. You know. Okay, so I think I'll, maybe I'll be the bad person here. I'm not making a case for drug users, mm. but I would say that one thing we need to um, take into consideration is there's an addiction problem. Mm -hmm. For people True to that. overdose on drugs, there is an addiction. addiction. You are taking mm. more than you know Necessary. what you're supposed to take. When you look at the story of Whitney Houston, if you because I've watched um, a documentary that they released recently, mm. the Whitney documentary. If you look at the story of her life and you understand how she started using drugs, it was it's like in their family. Mm. It was mm. a thing. Because yes. her mom was a singer. Her family has always been in the entertainment. She has um, Diane Warwick, is her auntie. So mm. when you look at their family, you see that there's a history of mm. drug mm. abuse. Her brothers were the ones, um, for Whitney now, her brothers were the ones who introduced her to heroin, crack, and all of those things. Are it was you not sure even. About that yes, that? It, was her, it was actually her brothers. Her brothers were the first people that she smoked weed with. And that was when she was a teenager. 
That's and then she moved on to her, boy, um, to her husband and her husband, they were doing all of the crazy things and then they had um, Bobby and they were still using drugs and Bobby saw a lot, a lot of crazy things and that, those were the things that led to her being depressed and suicidal. And then there was the media that was always on her back and everything. I don't think that Nick Gordon actually had, I'm going to say a hand in her death. I, I don't know the story okay, so behind everything. Okay, so what happened is basically, I think it saw at, um, at, at the bottom drown mm -hmm. and it, it didn't call for help immediately. I'm so mm -hmm. sure that That's probably it. they were taking drugs together. He was probably intoxicated. Well, so. according to him, he said that he walked in and met her like that. No, no, no. no but he, I don't, he never denied the fact yeah. that he saw her taking drugs. He, I mean, he that, never that did. They were all, they were both taking drugs were both together. Taking. And all so that. I'm saying that there has been a pre, uh, there has been a prevalence in that family of people abusing drugs because Nick was also kind of like adopted by Whitney. Yeah, he was like when a big brother. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. He was a big brother to Bobby. So there's a, a there's a history in their family of people using drugs, and I just want to say that we are entering this year again with another drug overdose death and I hope that this year this is not going to be the pattern mm. because the past few years in the last decade we've seen so we've lost so many people you know to drug overdose and I hope that this year there would be an active campaign I mean it's easy to say that people should not take drugs which is what which is what I'm saying that I might be making a case for you know drug addicts mm. it's easy it's very easy when you're not on that side to say oh don't do drugs you're disgracing your family you're embarrassing your family it's not that easy I think the best thing we can do is, like she said, let's do more movies to raise awareness about the, the ills of doing these things, of being addicted to these things, and to be more empathetic to people who are struggling with these things, and to also educate people about, you know, like, even if you want to do drugs, these are the amount of, this is the limit no, to no, what no, you do. Yes, I've said it before. There is this no, is the limit. You shouldn't even do drugs. Do you know what? Yeah, that's what I said. It's easy to say that you'll not be able to control say this is the limit. limit. That means right? you're saying you you're can saying, start. Because <laughs> once I get over that limit, I say, okay, no, okay, this limit is not working mm. for me anymore. Can I try more? Just but can you, can, you can you prevent everybody in the world from doing drugs? You can't prevent everybody, you but you cannot encourage them to do it. You are not encouraging, limits. you are not encouraging it people. Work. It's just like saying, use condoms. Am I encouraging everybody to have premarital sex? No, but I'm saying if you must have premarital sex, then use condoms. No, that's the thing Well, um, let's, let's come back to the story now. Now, this is a family, like you said, that has the history of drugs. Bobby yeah. Brown before he even married with Houston, a lot of oh, people already, were scared yeah. that, okay, yes. this is a cocaine addict, mm -hmm, somebody that's yes. been to rehab back. And the yes. interesting part and is that he's done with drugs now. He's a clean well, man yeah, now. And he, was, he was able to break out to of break it. Out of well, it and for it everybody around him that got involved. That's, that's what it says, right? right? Yeah. We can't be so sure if he's actually clean. Well, let's be, let's let's be, actually. Yeah, and then, I think do you know there's different conspiracies? If you look at his lifestyle now, he looks like Yeah, you know the different conspiracy theories that they said with Houston's death is a murder and not drug over that. Yeah, they found yeah. drugs, but you know, her ID card was missing, her credit cards were missing. I think and, those are just conspiracy theories. Yeah, so I'm just saying, and then um, we found Christina as well. Yeah, she was we, dead. It was very, very sad. It, it's just like a, a, a dealer, cycle. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, Bobby Christina's dealer mm -hmm. yeah. died of The one that found uh, her, yeah. and mm -hmm. all that. And now this guy is also it's gone. Somebody so that's like, associated with the family. So that's what I'm saying, yeah. that there's but a drug problem. Honest, when I saw when I saw it, yeah, I'm, I'm in my mind. I'm thinking that maybe there is more to this, and the drug thing is just a cover up to everything that is happening. Because honestly, let's take a look at it. It, I mean, there are other people that do drugs and they are old, yeah, and they are not dead. It can't yeah. be just one particular family that everybody in that family mm. doing drugs is dying. It's just weird in a way. Yeah, well, it's still as weird as it is, um, we have to go on a break, but mm. when we return, we still have more stories to discuss. Stay with us. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal. Are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from. 
Malawi like. Welcome back to Tea Time on Floss TV Africa. And yes, we're moving on to the next story, who is on Naira Mali. And um, according to his lawyers, the four count charge of conspiracy stealing, assault, and obstructing the police against their clients, the Malian president, mm -hmm. Naira Mali's two brothers, Idris Fashola, Babatunde Fashola, and their cousin Kunle Oberi, charges might be dropped before the next hearing. As the Nigerian rapper Naira Mali has reportedly opted for an out of court settlement over the rapper's involvement in alleged car theft. Does he even have any involvement in the car theft? Well, for them to be settling out of, of court, that means yeah, something to happened. Be, yeah, maybe. According to the story, it was his cousin that drove the car away. Um, but so he was there, that? he was but present. At the end of the the car was, they said the car was um, traced to his to house, house yeah. and all of that. So wow. uh, for them to be saying, because if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong, if I'm not guilty of something, or if I yeah. don't have any involvement, why do I want to say Settle out of okay, so I think what happened is, I'm just thinking, I'm not mm. sure, but from stories gathered, I think what happened was, it wasn't like a car theft, yeah? Not like they stole the car. Or just car. like bullying. It was just bullying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I think that's why. I, I must say that I'm very disappointed. I like Naramali, but I think this is a new year, and at this point, he needs to start putting himself in a, like, good light. Speaking mm -hmm. of Naramali, did you guys hear about the uh, Malian, Malian fest, fest and mm -hmm. um, what happened? At the And now, um, <laughs> they moved some people from the venue to the VIP session in Kirikiri to go and watch the I show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Maya Fest, Fest was crazy. There were so many memes, you know, on Twitter. Everybody was just reacting. But it was a success. It was, yeah, of it course, was it was sold out. Sure. People, mm -hmm. people jumped fence of a hotel mm -hmm. to attend the concert just for you to know that it was really, really, you know, it was a very, very great concert. And okay. but I just think for next year, yeah, for this year, right? Yeah. For this year, Malian Fest should hold in a bigger venue. No, I feel like maybe he was thinking in his head. He does not really know how. Yeah, he does not know how he this man. But you to even think of using a hotel. Are you sure? You know sometimes it should, it it should have a controlled known. place because if mm. they had done that show in, it would in, have been in very an open environment and yeah, I mean, an open space and yeah. all of that, trust me, it would have been worse. It would have been very rough. Because mm. people would jump the fence and then they jump into the crowd. But yeah. that one was a controlled crowd. But it was so not even very controlled. It was, it, no, it was outside that wasn't controlled. Control. But once yeah. you're inside, but that one, once you're there, anything could anything have happened. Can happen. So, uh, you know. And yeah. they said right. they could uh, once they hear uh, Naira. Naira I honestly feel Naramali should do better this year and try to put himself in a good light because mm. we cannot um, put away the fact that he's a great influence on the youth mm. and he needs to know that already and start mm. acting right. Yeah. You know? yeah. Especially because, when you want to run for president. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. people that know him personally have all, I've confirmed, so many people have confirmed that he's a cool and calm a person, person, a shy yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just wondering, don't let don't let it be to just people around you. Let everybody out there know that Naramali is not the Naramali they think in their head. He needs to start doing good things now and let everybody know that this person is a good man and not just a yeah. terrible man. Because we can't keep, you know, mm -hmm. having these bad stories every day and then you think people will still want their children to listen to you or anybody around them to, you know, follow you. I, well, I don't think Naramali ever gave a vibe of... Like, be, do you get? I never. I don't think he ever gave that vibe. Yeah, because his, his entire brand is not built on a good yeah. guy. No, not, his that's entire that's brand is actually built on a bad guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's built you on already that. have that yeah. fame and all of that now. It's time for you so to, it's time change to change the from mm. people thinking you're a bad guy and you're a terrible person to let them know that okay, this is before not before you end up like Takashi. Mm, Takashi, you know. You know. No, but I still, even then, I still don't think that Naraman is a bad person. Like in this situation, I think it was. Just clearly a case of abuse of power where they felt like okay, nothing could happen abuse to them. Of could, fame, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, abuse of with yeah. fame comes power because mm. they were in the wrong, they hit the man's mm. car. So that's, I understand where the that, man that is makes coming him a bad from. Person if you're yeah, exactly. And it, it's like person. being it's like bullying somebody saying that, Oh, I have power over you. And when this situation came out, I'm actually kind of disappointed because 
when the um, story came out, he, he said that, you know, yes, you, like, you understand, he showed us his cars and he said, why would he steal somebody's car? And the man's no, it, car was... No, I think, I think the no, word is the stealing. Steal, yeah. Okay, you he's stealing that. Yeah. Yeah. stealing that he has a problem with it. So he, he feels maybe they should have used something. They should have used and something. And I think it, it referred to him as Ade, Yemi, Fashion, and the name Bante. was wrong, yeah. Yeah, the name was wrong. So, obviously, yeah. it was only right for him to But should have still just... You, you understand, he, he knew what they were talking about. Mm. He should have just come out to clear the air and say, okay, well, I'm going to do <laughs> this or I'm going to rectify this situation. Instead, he did not even show up at court and it was until when, you know, the judge threatened him that they were, he was going to be in prison. That was when his lawyer was not like that, okay, they should try and settle so this out of court, court and all of that. And all all right, so no, um, our president, we appeal <laughs> to you, please. This is 2020. Mm. I think this is time to be a better influence on the youth yeah. and the people that follow you. Yes, um, I'm not wearing belts today, so you know you have influence <laughs> okay. in a way, but I would never do some of the things you do, so and I think you also yeah. need to stop some of the mm. things you do. So yeah. moving on, Tony Lawani teaches a son, Lord Mean what it means to be a less privileged for his sex birthday. Okay. I'm so impressed, and in my head, I'm I like, saw I saw your comment. You saw my ah, comment, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, so wow. super impressed. Wow. I feel like every parent should do this. I mean, this is like the best gift you can ever give to your child. You're training him to be humble. Mm. You're training him to know that life is not always sweet, and mm. even if it's sweet for you, it's not sweet for everybody. And do mm. not look down anybody because they didn't put mm -hmm. yourself in that situation mm -hmm. i mean toy lawani kudos to you this is um, a very intelligent move and i'm sure that your son will live by this forever i mean it's better than getting him a rolex or a ring things that they will probably not even know the oh, value yeah, yeah i mean all those things it, it probably doesn't even know the value of it now it's just six years old and you wait for him and that's the end of the, the whole thing but this one will live but, with but him it's forever. very important that every child out there especially those born with a silver spoon and in some cases diamond spoons should <laughs> know that um Life is not a bed of roses. There's yeah. actually people that are actually struggling to even have three square meal a day, and then you you have options. You can even say, "I don't want this," I want, and then they make this for you. Then that very moment. So I think it's a very good lesson, and a lot of people should take cue from yeah. this. And, um, uh, I'll just say this. I say I would say that um, while it is a valuable lesson that has been learned, I would say that she should not make it a one-time thing. It's, if it's just a one-time thing where it goes out and it sees, you know, the less privileged mm. and all of that, it should be a continuous lesson. The lesson should not just end here on Instagram posts and all of that. It should be something that even outside or behind the cameras when mm. we are not seeing, she's building this lesson. Do you understand? You exactly. It's not just his birthday that you have to be like, okay, this is the other side of life. It should be something that she continually teaches her son. And I think that that is very important. Yeah, I, think, I, think for that me, I think so in Lawan is somebody that you can see anything about her, but she's a very good mother. Because yeah. when it, if she's, she has a um, children's Instagram account control, she's <laughs> sure that this is not just for the camera, it's something that she has always told the boy. Because she in her post, she said he's always asking questions mm -hmm. and all of that and i feel this is just enough because not everybody would do this this thing that she has done for me there is no but or no plus <laughs> we should applaud that it's a yeah, good one definitely yeah. it's a good one so big shout out to Tony lawani and that one so moving on nigerian singer scales revealed that whiskey believed that maven's record artist rema is a star and would stand the test of time Definitely, mm. I also believe that. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we all because Rema that. had a very, very wonderful 2019. Yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. when you look at 2019 with the um, kind of success that Rema had, it make you think, where was this boy in 2018? Mm. Where was he in 2017? But you know the crazy thing, Rema has always been into music. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah. I saw videos of him as way back as 2014 mm -hmm. and all of that. And he had a group. He was he was part of a group back then. Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, he had to focus on education. I think it was based mm. on um, his parents' um, yeah, that's wishes. Very important. Like, mm. you need to go to school yes. first. So as soon as he got out of school, he got he into the music. And then, um, what's his name? Is it Dr. Dr. C no, not Dr. C. What's his name? Um, the Prince. The, sorry. Mm -hmm. the Don Jazz's brother him. found him. And I think the Prince is also the CEO of Jones Inn Entertainment. Yeah, Jones Inn Entertainment. Mm -hmm. like yeah, so, first of all, joined. Yeah, so. yeah, but like like I said, the success that he has had in this year, um, last year, was very, very phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He released, um, I think he released an album and two EPs. And 
like I've jammed to those songs and every single song on all of the, the Another EPs banger. And, uh, every single song was <laughs> no, no, a Rana, banger. Rana, Rana Come Rana on. A big star. I Come don't on. think anybody can even argue or say Yeah. That and I'm glad and I'm I glad think the likes very, of very Whiskey great than like other mm. big artists yes, are beginning to recognize him. that. It's yes. always at Barack Obama's list. What are you saying? Yes, yes. But I wish another song made it to Obama's 2019 list and not still Iron Man. Another? Oh, like another, another song, song from, yeah. from Maybe that's yeah, just I think that favorite. was the song that just yeah. connected to And then Bonaboy, Boy, we can't take it away from Bonaboy. Yeah, anybody anybody. Big shout anybody out to Bonaboy. Come on. Yeah, yeah come so, on. Um, big shout out to um, Rema for yes. this win, mm -hmm. win, win. And we can only hope that 2020 gives you more wins. Yeah. All right. But it's time for us to take a bow on this episode of Tea Time. And we say have a great day. But remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive contents by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Channel, a plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always goes to my co-anchors, Nimi Adekombi, Ewa Ritu, for the amazing contributions and the entire production team. I am Ifeo Lua Oshunke saying thank you for watching and see you tomorrow. Peace.